unless you seek, you do not find. Mm. No? Since I've been a seeker of spiritual of spirituality, mm. and since in turn I received a lot of information, a lot of knowledge, and a mm. lot of experience in that, mm. which have brought which has brought in much joy mm. in my life. Mm. I hope and I wish. And I'd love to contribute, if possible, if somebody wants to, in the lives of people, to make them seekers of spirituality. For that, I work with my teacher, Mahatma Chavapuksi, to spread his teachings, mm. to spread the knowledge mm. of learning spirituality. Mm. Spirituality is not techniques. It is a way of thinking. It is a way of being. Mm. It is a way of living. So he has laid down, he has laid down a whole lot of, uh, how do you say, workshops, meditations, yeah. practices mm. that enables you to seek. He has also enlisted number of books mm. that one could read mm. and comprehend. Mm. And I would love to help people read and understand those books. So what happens when they do that? Mm then their understanding becomes much better. Mm. So when an ordinary person looks at the sun, he sees a bright light, right? And he knows it is day. Mm. Does he understand the implications of a day? For him a day would be, I go to school, I go to college, I go to work. Once the sun sets, I come back home, or I go to the bar, or go to the club, or go, you know, that's all. Very mundane. But a spiritual person, when he looks at the sun, he sees something far beyond just the dawning of a day. He sees the energy giver of the universe. He feels the energy of the sun, the contribution that it is making to nature. Though a botanist looks at it from only his botanical point of view, a zoologist looks at it only from his zoological point of view. A spiritualist looks at it from its totalitarian point of view. Mm. And this totalitarian understanding of the subject comes only from study. Mm. And study can never happen unless you are a seeker. So my ambition is that everybody who is capable of should become a seeker. Mm. He should seek mm. spiritual understanding. Mm. Therefore his entire spectrum of looking at life mm. becomes so wide mm. and it will be great, greatly contributory to his own life. Mm. So as a seeker, this is what I like. Mm. And in whatever way I am able to help, I am most willing to help people. I conduct regular book reading sessions, regular even the exercise of recording this, thanks yes. to you. Thanks to the divine is, now. Is also an exercise in that direction. That we can bring this yes. information to people. Ah. And we cannot give everything to them. But at yes. least we can kindle the interest yes. in the people. So that is how we, we will, I would like to contribute into lives of people. As a healer, my suggestion would be that you understand the healing process in your own body. First of all, you understand your own body. Mm. We look at this body just as a physical component, mm. which is only one part of it. Mm. This has several components. Mm. And unless you study this subject, mm. and unless you work with it, mm. you will not know the different aspects of the body. Mm. So study yourself. Mm. And realize what is the purpose of this body? Why, why is it essential to have a body? And who has the body? And what is this body all about? And what are the other aspects of this body? Spiritually, it may sound funny to most people who hear. We have several bodies, not one body. Mm. But for a common man, he has only one body. Mm. That is his understanding. So imagine when you will study further and find out there are several bodies and each body has a purpose. Mm. And each body serves a purpose in coordination with the other bodies. Mm. 
And when all the bodies work in harmony, it is like a string instrument that is well tuned. It produces music. That's why they say sound in harmony is music. Sound in disharmony is noise. Both of them are measured in decibels. One is beautiful to listen to, one is problem to listen to. So it's just like that. So I would like people to, what I would like people to do is to learn about their bodies, to learn about how these bodies operate, to learn about how to make these bodies work towards the purpose for which they were formed. This whole exercise is called healing. Healing is not about just relieving you from your pains and discomforts. That is one aspect of it. The pains and discomforts of the disease and the illnesses that you have are a result of the disharmony between your bodies. What is the use of healing this body, this ailment and discomfort when the cause is still not addressed? Address the cause and this will go by itself. You can't just heal a body because you can't just heal a symptom. Unless the cause is eradicated. Mm. So eradicate the cause. To eradicate the cause, you need to learn about it. Mm. And that's what this whole school is all about. Mm. This whole school mm. of Yoga Pranavidya, or Pranic Healing, mm. that was set up by Mahatma Churukopsu, mm. is to make you aware of all these things. Mm. And make you capable and teach you the techniques and teach you the philosophy, teach you the principles, the laws that govern this. Mm. So that you, after you have studied all this, and collated it in your mind, you are able to use it effectively to eradicate the cause of misery. And once you eradicate the cause of misery, of course, it's a easily said than done. It may take you several janmas, but you can begin today. And you begin to eradicate, eradicate, eradicate. So your life becomes far more productive. And once you begin to eradicate all these causes, automatically the body becomes healthy, automatically the body becomes lively. That's what I wish for people to do. Learn and practice it.